Yes. Man, I, I super, super want to know about your opinion. Né? É, do you know, I, I, I will ask you to rumors. Donovan Mitchell, rumors. Ok? I want uh, your opinion about this. Hmm. Never heard of him. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been watching this for about a year and a half now. So for me, I'm not surprised. Like I kind of felt like this was coming. You know, that's it did. It felt like you know, I always wondered, all right, so they come in here, you know, the new front office and everybody. They bring in um Johnny Bryant, who's you know, was an assistant coach in Utah and very close to Donovan. We all know the story. You know, the Knicks should have drafted mm -hmm. him. Phil Jackson was talked out of it, went with Frank Nilekina instead. You know, the rest is history. Uh, Donovan wanted to be a Nick. He wanted to play for the Knicks. He's from here. He literally grew up, like, right by the Knicks training facility. Um, so it felt like, you know, it was the right thing to do. They didn't do it. And he became a three-time All-Star, and the Knicks still don't have, you know, they're still trying to find a, you know, a high-end player like that on the perimeter. So I just, once I saw, okay, Leon Rose, William Wesley, uh, Johnny Bryant, like, I'm pretty good at, I'm not great at math, Victor, but I, I'm, I'm good enough at that kind of math, right? So it became, <laughs> all right, how soon before that starts to happen? Well, f what first has to happen is there has to be a breakup in Utah. Well, that clearly happened this year. Then they trade mm -hmm. Gobert. All right. Once they traded Rudy Gobert, you knew, okay, Donovan's next. And now, you know, it's a wait and see kind of situation where you're wondering. I I'll say this. I don't believe. Now, I don't know anything. You know, I don't, no one's told me anything, you know, on the Knicks side or anything like that. I'm following it a lot through a lot of my friends uh, at ESPN who do a great job covering this. Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski has been phenomenal on this. He's got all the info. He's the one guy I trust on this. And, um, you know, anyone you talk to, Brian Windhorst, he's really good on this as well. Mm -hmm. And it's all that same feeling of not if, but when it happens. Okay? Good so point. That, good yeah, point. <laughs> that's, it, it, you know, like – if he's traded, no, it's not if he's traded to It's when he's traded. So when will he? Well, not yet. Um, and mainly, I think, because the Knicks are trying to make sure that, hey, listen, we can give you a lot of draft picks, mm -hmm. but we don't have to give you a lot of players, too. You know, we'll give you draft picks because this is a really good player and he's 25 years old and it's worth it. But if you're asking us to give you all these draft picks – and then all these young players, too, that's not going to happen. So the Jazz probably want to see, all right, well, let's see if we can get a be better offer from some other teams. So they talk to Miami. They'll talk to Toronto. I think one of the rumors was they talked to uh, Washington, the Wizards. Uh huh. I and did. they know none of these teams can offer what the Knicks can when it comes to draft picks. So that's sort of where we are. So – that's why I keep saying I don't feel like it's a matter of if. I think it's a matter of when. And mm -hmm. the only thing that could, you know, hurt this whole thing is if another team decides to give up something that the Jazz feel is way more value than what the Knicks can offer. Or the Knicks are forced to up, you know, put, all right, fine, we'll give you all the players too, which I don't think they're comfortable doing that. So the, the thing that could stop a trade from happening is the Knicks saying that cost is too high and we don't want to pay that price. Uh, man, uh, in Brazil, <laughs> Knicks fans, every day, Alan, in, in my direct uh, <laughs> Knicks fans, Victor, uh, Spider comes to the Knicks. Spider comes to the Knicks every day, man. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. I, I, I won't say, yes, Spider come. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't. I, you can't do that. I, I'm telling you, uh, I've told everybody this. I don't believe it because there were some, you know, you probably saw them too. Last week, 
there was um there was a day last week where a radio station in Utah and a couple other people just started jumping up saying, "Oh, it's 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 done, it's done, it's done," and mm-hmm. I checked in with a few people. I just said, "What is going on in Utah? What are you hearing?" And I kept being told, "Status quo, nothing has changed. No, there's no deal. There's no nothing. Like you know, something could happen, but." Nothing's imminent yet. Nothing's going to happen yet. Uh, So, no, there's nothing to report. And I checked Woj's Twitter. (laughs) I didn't see him say anything like that. So uh, you can tell everybody that when Woj tweets it, then it's official. But until then, (laughs) we're all just just waiting. I, I think that's the best way to put it. Hey, man. It's complicated. It's very complicated. Well, you know uh, what? Think yeah. about it this way. Are you a fan mm-hmm. of, of Spider-Man? Oh, so much. So okay. much. I I have a, a cap. There you go. Okay. Well, <laughs> where where does Spider-Man live? New York. Yeah. So? Uh, Might as well Miles make it work. Morales. <laughs> the new Miles Morales. Come to the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel, we will love yes, this advertising, man. Spider-Man 4. Let's go. Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> yes, man. Yes. I will love this movie, man. I yeah. will love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'll uh, be a lot of fun. The, uh, I think, again, now it's all, you know, it has to happen. Uh, a trade has to go down and, and you don't know like who is still on the roster because that's also a big part of it. But a lot of people are saying, well, he doesn't make the Knicks better. And yes, he does. I mean, he, mm-hmm. ma- yes, he will make them not better. a contender, but better. No, not well, not yet. But that's where yet. you begin. You have to start somewhere. And so, okay, are you better with him and Jalen Brunson than you are compared to what you were last year? Of course you are. Whoa. And last year, you missed the playoffs by a <laughs> handful of games, right? So, yes. This year, you're better if you can make this trade. You're already better with Jalen Brunson, okay? You're well, better with him. Uh-huh. But yeah. this year, if you get him with Jalen Brunson, R.J. Barrett in his fourth year, you know, obviously, you know, him growing up, uh, you're a better team. And that's what it's about. It's always about, you know, that next step. Just can we just – can you get better? Can you get better? Can you get better? And each year, just keep building and building and building. That's That's the plan. I mean – Victor, I know everybody wants, you know, you 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 take the magic wand and you just go, <laughs> right? All right, we signed LeBron, championship <laughs> contender, right? We traded for Kawhi Leonard, championship contender, right? <laughs> Kevin Durant signed here, championship contender. It, it doesn't work like that. Look at how long with some of these teams it takes them to grow and build and build and build until, you know, it finally turns into – uh, a team that has a nice run of a couple of years where you're like, oh, wow, hey, that, that team's pretty mm-hmm. good now. So that's that's what you have to do. And that's why if Donovan's 25 and Jalen's 25 and RJ's 21 and Mitchell's 23 and, you know, I mean, Mitchell Robinson, like, you know, Quickly's 21 or 22, uh, you know, that's what I'm talking You know, like, that's how you do it. Now they play for – three, four years where there's consistency every year. They're together and they just work on it, get better. A couple of heartbreaks, you lose a round and come back the next year and want to fight back. That's how you do it. So, you know, it's it's not always you get LeBron and here you go. You're a championship contender. It doesn't always go that way. Sometimes it's got to be steps and steps and steps. So I agree. If they can I get agree. him. This could be a big step towards building now towards a team that maybe one day, you know, gives you a run. Uh, Man, uh, I see, I see this point. Uh, The problem, it's not a picks, it's a players, Uh, like you said, Uh, and uh, I I, uh, like it, Uh, a phrase uh, I I find here. Um... When when you want a star, you need to know how to give and to get it. Yeah. Uh, I I saw uh, your post uh, talking about this. Yeah. Uh, you want Donovan Mitchell, 
Right? Yes. Yeah. You I would you. like to see Donovan Mitchell as a Nick. Yes. And, and, and as I said, I try to tell fans who are, you, you can't trade this player. You can't trade that player. You can't give up these picks. You can't do. And I say, well, what are you going to like? You walk into a, you, you go to a car dealership and you see a car that you want. And the mm-hmm. dealer says, all right, it costs this much money. If you trade in your car, we'll give you this much, but you still got to give us more. Are you like, no, mm-hmm. no, no, not doing it. I mean, you have to give to get. Yes. Right? You have yes. to give. So sometimes you're going to give up. And, and you know, some fans are so, you know, they're attached to players, and, and I get it. And so, you know, well, we'll give you these guys. And you're like, yeah, but mm-hmm. those guys are not worth anything to you. How do you think they're going to be worth anything to Utah? Like, you've got to give them a reason to want to make the deal happen. And I agree. You know, you're going to have to give it. It's there's going to be a player or two, and I think it'll be multiple that the Knicks would have to put in this deal that you're going to say when it goes down. Oh man, <laughs> miss that guy, right? You're going to say, oh, I hate that we had to trade that guy. Like that's that's reality. You're going to say, yes, oh, I... love getting him, but I, I hate letting him go. Ah, I don't want to give him <laughs> up. Like I, I, you know, like. We all see these trades that happen, but it's a reality. So that's if this trade, if if the Knicks can make a trade like this, just be prepared. There's going to be a player or two that, you know, you're going to say, oh, I hate the fact that he's not on the Knicks anymore. But that's that's the way it goes. Man, I, I believe in six or uh, five or six picks and three players. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hurt, 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 hurt. But okay, Obi Toppin could be, could be. Quentin Grimes. Yeah, and he had a really good summer. So if you're Utah, you got to replace Donovan Mitchell, right? You got to replace yes. him. Well, there you go. That's the player that can replace him. And I, Obi Toppin I, I, is a guy that you know you you can sell to your fans when you make a trade like well look this guy's a top 10 pick he was a college player of the year he averaged in the last five games of last season he averaged 27 a game he's had a 40 point game uh he's playing behind randall maybe there's more to him and he's a highlight film he's in the dunk contest mm-hmm. like if you're the jazz these are things that you've got to show your fan base hey we've got quentin grimes was you know on the all summer league team who played phenomenal in the summer league. Yes. And we're going to need a, a guy that can play Donovan's position. This guy can do that. And then it's, and here's Obi top and a top 10 pick who was a college player of the year. Like you've got to have something, not just draft picks, right. To yeah. present to yes. your fan base. Yes. And, um, and that's why, you know, names like that, as much as I love Obi top love him. Great kid, like family, the whole thing. So it's like heartbreaking to think like, Oh man, like, I love having him around. Like I love, like I feel the same. <laughs> I love like watching him grow, but it's gonna, it's gonna take guys like that. Like unfortunately, it's just part of the business, you know. Like he's valuable, and I would be happy for him because I would think to myself, well, now he's gonna play. Like he's gonna yes. get to play, you know. Because Randall, with Julius Randall here, he's Obi's not gonna play a lot. It's just reality. You know, Randall is a you know an accomplished All Star level. Uh, NBA starter so you know he's not you know Obi's not playing more minutes than than Julius Randall it's just not the way it's going to happen so for Obi it's an opportunity for him to play and for him that's obviously important too so again I, I'm not saying he's in the deal I'm just saying like we're, we're talking hypothetically <laughs> I understand we're just saying these are possible names and I'm giving you reasons why yeah, it's going to be people that you're like, no, not him, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine uh, Leon Rose uh, don't want Leafs, Obi Topping and Emmanuel Kikley together. Uh, yeah, in no. my opinion, uh, the point is Emmanuel Kikley or Obi Topping in this negotiation uh, m- uh, more. Kenton Grimes and uh, Miles McBride or another play. Okay, I, I believe in three players, uh, okay. more uh, five picks, in my opinion. Okay, my mm-hmm. opinion. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Utah wants six picks and yeah. two players, uh, Obi Top and 
and fun- unfortunately Manuel Kikli, for example. Yeah. But uh, man, I I love so much uh, Manuel Kikli. I know people loves more Ubi Topping uh, between Manuel Kikli uh, in general. I I, I make um, uh, uh, the question in my channel. People like more Obi né, than Emmanuel Kikli. Hmm. Man, I, I prefer Emmanuel Kikli. Man, I, I like so much this guy. Uh, man, I, I believe uh, Emmanuel Kikli can be uh, so much... Uh, um, can be a, a great player in NBA, in my opinion. Né? Uh, yeah. I like so much. Uh, it's hard work. Uh, 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 end of game... Uh, Emmanuel yep. Kikley training. I, I I like so much this guy, yeah. man. But yeah, um, I, I I think when you when you're comparing him and and Obi Toppin, obviously two different kind of players. Mm-hmm. And um, quickly, I, I love. Yeah, I, I I'm with you as far as what he's about. You know, you understand what I mean by that? Like what mm-hmm. what he's about. You could see that he loves basketball and he's in the gym all the time um you know like they tell him you know hey uh quick when you're done turn off the lights because they know he'll be the last one out right like that's 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 the kind of guy he is and i appreciate that you know in in Mm -hmm. in new york people are it's a lot of hard-working people in new york people put in a lot of hours and when you're that kind of player people respect that because you feel the same way. Like, yeah, yeah. You put in overtime like I do. Like, you know, that's, that's the emotion. Um, you care as much as I do. And I think that that's what I love about Emmanuel quickly. I also think that with the second unit, he and Derek Rose are really good together. And we didn't Mm -hmm. see a lot of that last year. And that's why I feel like quickly struggled early in the season when Derek Rose was injured is he just you could see it he was kind of like a little lost and and rose is such a good mentor around these guys so the fact that you'll have derrick rose back and then quickly with him as your backcourt you know your reserve your second unit i like those two together a lot and Me too, um, man. you know so but it's different because i obviously obi is another guy who loves to be in the gym and only wants to play basketball he doesn't really do a lot of other things and you know, another hardworking kid. He's uh, Nick fan. Nick fan. That's what I was saying about Jalen Brunson. The same thing about Ty. it means more to him because his family was watching these teams and that he knows the history, understands it. That matters to him. So, you know, but he's a different kind of player because he needs a guard to help him. Like he's not mm-hmm. somebody you give the ball to and he creates. He's yes. someone like, get me down the floor. I'll get a couple of fast break dunks or I'll go back door and you throw me an alley-oop. You know, that's more Obi Toppin, not necessarily a guy that you give him the ball and, you know, he can do things with the ball. So they're, mm-hmm. they're very different players. But personality-wise, so easy to be a fan of either one of these guys. I totally agree with you. Uh Alan, I, I saw uh, a post. A post, no, but uh, people uh, criticize uh, the size of Jalen Brunson yeah. and Donovan Mitchell. Imagine it. Donovan Mitchell come to the Knicks. Yeah. But, okay. <laughs> people criticize the size né, of Jalen Brunson and Donovan Mitchell because yeah. of defense. Uh, do you consider this a problem? Um, I think at times it could be when you play against bigger teams and they get you switching, that can happen. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, the Jazz backcourt was Mike Conley, who was 6'1", and Donovan mm-hmm. Mitchell, who was 6'1". And they they were winning 50 games and 48 games and 45 games and making the playoffs every year. You know, there's, there's ways around it. Um, but, yeah, you're going to play – you're going to play some teams that are just bigger than you. I do remember a team winning a championship recently with a backcourt of Fred Van Vliet and Kyle Lowry. They weren't mm-hmm. very big. Um, it, you know, Man, you Derek can, Harper and John Starks playing together. Don't... Uh, yeah, different, yeah they, they were big. They were big. They were both 6'5", but I, I just feel like 
you can figure it out. And uh -huh. those two guys are going to put so much pressure on the other team, def you know, defensively, uh -huh. that you know, you've got. Like, that's why you need Mitchell Robinson because you need somebody that if they do, you know, the size factor is there. At least you've got him uh, protecting, right? You need some other guys that can defend. I think R.J. Barrett, uh, if he's playing the three, that's even smaller now because he's you know six seven. Um, can he uh, become a better defensive player so he can cover for some things as well and switches and whatnot? So I understand the criticism. I do. I think it's fair. You know, they're not big guys. But while they're not tall, they're strong, physically mm -hmm. strong. They're not skinny little guys. These are strong guys who can muscle you into the paint, who can get where they want to get. So, you know, I mean... It's man, it's certainly man, a concern, but it doesn't it doesn't stop me from saying no, don't do it. Like no, because <laughs> I know what both those guys can do, and they can both get into the paint. And in this league, that's also that's just as important as being able to, uh, you know, have the length to contest on a shot every now and then. Man, uh, uh, I know the culture, man. Nah? The culture in New York loves a uh, defense. Uh, yep. Remember, uh, remember Pat Riley in 19 years. Yep. Man, yep. super team yep. uh, defense. Started there. <laughs> Man, uh, I believe this team with uh, Jalen Brunson and Don Donovan Mitchell will be more, uh, super more creative in attack. So so creative. I, I imagine. I can imagine it, uh, this team, uh, two guys playing together. Man. That will be, I, I, yeah. That part will be interesting to watch too. Like I remember, uh, Stefan Marbury and Steve Francis, mm -hmm. and they played together, and they didn't know how. They were both so used to being the guy, so that was, it didn't work, you know. Like they just couldn't figure it out, um, but yet we've seen it. I mean, another one. Mark Jackson and Rod Strickland, they were team. They were mm -hmm. teammates, both drafted in consecutive yes. years, and they were both point guards. And for a while, they they did try to play them together. And once again, he didn't know how. What I found interesting is, is that Jalen Brunson has played with Luka Doncic already, and Luka yes. dominates the basketball. And mm -hmm. Jalen had to learn how to play off the ball, so understand like when one guy's going and he's got it i've got to still cut move whatever it is i got to learn how to play off the ball well he's already done it so if donovan does come into the picture it's not like jalen brunson's like whoa i'm not used to this no you very used to it because you just did it mm -hmm. and you guys did it all the way to the western conference finals yes so that could work to his advantage the other example is is Clyde Frazier and Pearl Monroe. Man, they you work with Clyde Frazier, man. <laughs> well, well, think about it. They learn how oh, to do man. it right together. They learn uh -huh. how to, yes. all right, if he's cooking, I gotta, I'll do this. If that guy's cooking, I'll do this. Like, they figured mm -hmm. it out. Yes. So I do think Brunson's experience with Luka Doncic will actually help him in playing, if it happens, with Donovan Mitchell. I don't think it'll be a problem for him at all. Man, 